Let's begin our worship this morning in prayer. Oh, did we get to have the chimes? blessings and the, the gathering that you have caused between us, that as we gather here, uh, sometimes our first motivation is to gather with other people that are of like mind. Other times our, our motivation is to gather with you. But whichever is the beginning for us, we are grateful, Lord, that you cause both to take place, that we are gathered together with one another. And then we find encouragement and loving, the loving touch of other humans and relationships that help us to find the encouragement and the loving touch of God and a relationship with the Almighty God who would let us call Him Father. And so we thank you, Father. And we thank you for the blessings that you pour out upon us when we come to worship you, when we lift up our voices in songs of worship and praise, when we uh, uh, cry out to you in prayer, or we whisper, or just consider in our thoughts the needs that we have and the questions that we struggle with, and the, uh, the blessings for which we are grateful. We thank you, Lord, that you've given us this thing called worship, and all of the means of grace that are available to us through your scriptures, through prayer, through rituals like communion, as we celebrate the Last Supper that Jesus shared with the disciples, but we also celebrate the exodus from Egypt and our deliverance from sin because of your blood upon the cross. Father, we pray that you would help us uh, for a little while to put aside the worries and cares of this world and focus upon you. And then as we do worship and we hear the words of the songs we sing, as we, as we hear other, the prayers of others and our own, as we hear the message spoken and applying your timeless, unchanging word to the uh, struggles of today in our modern culture, even though there's nothing new under the sun, we, we know, Lord, that uh, there are different needs for us in, in how we are to share the good news of a Savior who died for us. And so we ask, Lord, that you would so work in our lives that we would be better prepared, not uh, just prepared for life after death, but that we would be prepared for uh, this mission that you have given to us, this task to share the good news of God with us. And so we give you this time this morning, uh, both in our worship and uh, in our fellowship meal that we have following the service, and in the information meeting, God, we ask that you, your presence would be very, uh, very much felt and that uh, we would know your will and your way for us, both individually and as a congregation. And though we're not making a, a, any new decisions today, um, we are gaining the information over these next months, possibly, in order to come to the place where when we know the details, how they, how they work out, uh, that we will be able to be wise in our decisions and voting. And I pray all of these things in Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Amen. There are announcements in your bulletin, and uh, Debbie does a very good job of uh, condensing them a bit for the, the words and information for us. And uh, rather than spend uh, an uh, inordinate amount of time talking about those announcements, they are there. And please be sure to look at them. And if you have questions, please call the office. Uh, Getting to Debbie on that would probably be wiser than calling me, but I don't mind if you call me to ask questions uh, on our announcements. 
Um, but I will ask Debbie, uh, besides the fact that we're going to have lunch following the service, uh, a little bit of time between the service and when they serve, um, but we can go on over there and, um, and have some fellowship. And then following that, we'll have this information meeting. And uh, as, as I uh, look around, I don't see any unfamiliar faces. Um, we have some. Do we have some back. guests and visitors? Yeah. Uh, I, I am seeing a couple in the back. A uh, gentleman has a yellow shirt and a lady has a blue dress. But I was, I was thinking that you look a little bit, well, one of you looks a little bit familiar. But uh, are you all new with us today? Or? We're snowbirds. Snowbirds, okay. And you've been here before. Yeah. That's why you look a little bit familiar. And um, his parents used to go here when they were living years ago. Okay. Okay, well, welcome back. Welcome back uh, from the uh, the Great White North. And so, <laughs> glad you're here with us. And Ridge and Jan are back, right here. Ridge and Jan, okay, hello. Welcome back as well. well I'm glad that you're here. And uh, the information meeting is fine for, uh, for everyone who's uh, interested in this church and you're a part of this church, even whether you're a member of the church or not. It's fine for you to participate and to learn uh, more of the details of the facts and how things are uh, shaping up and working out, and uh, you're welcome to do that. Um, I will say that it's not really an open meeting um, because it's, it's for those that, uh, that are uh, at a place in, in their heart and their spirit that they recognize that, that, that there's a need to separate from the United Methodist Church as, a, as an organization. I, I've loved, I, grew, I was born into a Methodist family. I was baptized Methodist. The Lord called me to be a, a follower of Jesus Christ in the Methodist Church. And at some point then after that, it became the United Methodist Church. But I still have, have had a lot of love and, and joy and pride for our United Methodist Church as it had been. But there's been so much change that uh, many of our congregations and pastors realize that we really just need to be two separate churches, those conservative Methodists and those progressive Methodists, doing Methodism the way and being a Christian the best they can. I like that quote, the best that we can, um, but separately. And if, if you're looking uh, at that you, you need for that separateness, it's really appropriate for you to be in the meeting. If not, then it's not only not, not necessary, but it's not appropriate to be in the meeting. And we'll trust that God will guide you on that. Um, we've had the prayer, and let's have some scripture readings about it. Thank you. Um, this is from Hebrews chapter 2, 1 through 9. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard, so that we do not drift away. For since the message spoken through the angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore so great a salvation? This salvation, which was first announced by the Lord, was confirmed to us by those who heard him. God also testified to it by signs, wonders, and various miracles, and by gifts of the Holy Spirit distributed according to his will. It is not to angels that he has subjected the world to come about which we are speaking, but there is a place where someone has testified. What is mankind that you are mindful of them, a son of man that you care for him? You made them a little lower than the angels. You crowned them with glory and honor and put everything under their feet. In putting everything under them, God left nothing that is not subject to them. Yet at present, we do not see everything subject to them, but we do see Jesus, who was made lower than the angels for a little while, now crowned with glory and honor because he suffered death so that by the grace of God, he might taste death for everyone. Um, now we join together in hymn number 374. And we sing all the verses and then the refrain. Then we put on that pile of fun.
please be seated. I invite you to join with me in the affirmation of faith that we find on the center portion of our bulletin. And uh, this is from 1 Corinthians and Colossians. This is the good news which we have received, in which we stand, and by which we are saved. Christ died for our sins, was buried, was raised on the third day, and appeared first to the women, then to Peter, and the twelve, and then to many faithful witnesses. We believe Jesus is the Christ, the anointed one of God, the firstborn of all creation, the firstborn from the dead, in whom all things hold together, in whom the fullness of God was pleased to dwell by the power of the Spirit. Christ is the head of the body and the church, and by the blood of the cross reconciles all things to God. Amen. I think we lined it up for this uh, affirmation of faith to be during the season of Sundays after Easter. And yet I recognize that it's very appropriate uh, for this Sunday's sermon as well, and in the topic of, of our meeting that we're having today. Uh, the Bible tells us clearly what it is to, that we are to believe. Heavenly Father, we thank you for the many blessings that we have. And as we bring to you this offering from the riches of our purses that you have provided for us, for our families, for our loved ones, we know that you have also provided that we may take part in your blessing in the world through your church. Help us to give <clears throat> beyond <clears throat> the financial blessings that we have for you and for your church. Help us to give up our time, our talents, uh, our gifts and services. Amen. During our offertory this morning, because we get such a large congregation, I invite you all to join with the second service senior rappers in this church. And sometimes at offering time, we do the words to an old song or a psalm or just something. We put it to a little craft beat. And this one we're going to do this morning is called I Know. And it was written by Ira Stanfield back in 1955 as a little hymn. Well, Ira, we're about to change that. <laughs> and your part is in rap rhythm. I know. I know. I know. I know. That Jesus saves from sin. So it's going to go like this. I know, I know, I know, I know that Jesus saves from sin. I know, I know, I know, I know that Jesus dwells with him. So Jesus saves from sin, and Jesus dwells within. You'll get it. Get our out, of the four, yes. out of the four I knows, which ones do the congregation say. They're going to say We're it. going to echo you, right? Mm -hmm. So we let you say, she says it, and then we say it. Mm -hmm. Okay. There was a change when Jesus came and washed my sins away. He changed my talk, and he changed my walk, and he turned my night to day. I know, I know, I know, I know that Jesus saves from sin. That Jesus saves from sin. I know, I know, I know, I know that Jesus dwells within. That Jesus dwells within. Now hope had I within my heart but dread and deep despair. But Jesus took away the clouds and showed me he was there. I know, I know, I know, I know that Jesus saves from sin. 
that Jesus saves from sin. I know, I know, I know, I know that Jesus dwells within. That Jesus dwells within. What joy is mine, what victory since Jesus dwells within. Of this one thing I can be sure that I am free from sin. I know, I know, I know, I know that Jesus saves from sin. That Jesus saves from sin. I know, I know, I know, I know that Jesus dwells within. That Jesus dwells within. You've got it now. While others doubt and don't receive, he brought me out and I believe. I know, I know, I know, I know that Jesus saves from sin. That Jesus saves from sin. I know, I know, I know, I know that Jesus dwells within. That Jesus dwells within. Well, I saw some faces um, stirred with concentration to make sure that you got it right. And I saw others' faces just beaming with smiles. And I was thinking about those smiles and wondering if you were smiling because of the wonderful words that you were rapping. Or if you were smiling because you felt really young because you're a bunch of rappers out there. <laughs> Maybe a little bit of both. Okay. And, um, so, please stand. treat it 
And um, we're glad that you're still up and about and getting things done and involved. Uh, but uh, I've, I've heard you referred to as uh, Becky is like the uh, ever ready bat, uh, bunny. And, uh, and we just want your batteries to be recharged. Amen to that. I need my batteries back. Okay, let's pray. Heavenly Father, we do give you thousands of praises for all of the wonderful people that you brought into our, our congregation, that we may be the church here at Spring Lake. We thank you, Lord, for uh, the improvements that you brought about in our spiritual lives, individually and as a whole, um, because of many different things that uh, you're starting new and the things that you have renewed that have been done in the past. We thank you, Lord, for just the, the strong presence of your spirit with us in our uh, various ways of, of honoring you through ministry in the church at Spring Lake. And uh, we lift up Barbara to you, Lord, and ask, Father, that you would deal with this condition of cancer for her. And we've seen you um, work through medical care, and we know that we live in an amazing time with the amazing blessings of modern medicine. And we give you the honor and glory for that, Father, for it is uh, by you, through others, that you provide that for us. And uh, we lift up uh, a son, Lord, Tyler, suffering from Crohn's and yet starting in a new job. And we pray, Lord, that you would uh, ease his suffering, maybe uh, even deliver him from this in the near future. And, uh, but that even for whatever time he may need to continue to deal with that, Father, we ask that you would... Um, or provide the blessings that allow him to live a good and healthy life and, and to be comfortable and to be effective in his workplace, that all will go well. And we do thank you for his wife and others like her that have been dear, sweet wives uh, in the midst of struggles and difficulties. We thank you for the husbands, Lord, that uh, though we may often struggle to, uh, to be the gentle men that you call us to be. Uh, we are grateful that you put a love in our hearts for those who are our wives and, and often mothers of our children, uh, that we too may be your blessing for them. And I thank you, Lord, that we have Mother's Day and Father's Day so close together, sort of like the bookends on a shelf. And uh, both are so important. All of us have had mothers and fathers. And uh, we know the importance of that, even for, for those that may have been uh, only a short time with a father or mother. But we, uh, we know that that is your plan and that is your blessing. And I thank you for those who've been fathers and mothers to us in the absence of those who would have been our blood parents. And Father, as we worship you here. I pray that you would turn our hearts and minds back to you and, uh, and then uh, as, as we consider your way for us, that uh, you would help to apply all that we experience here today uh, to better us and to help us to know what areas of, of sin and brokenness from this world may be interfering with our righteousness as sons and daughters of God. Apply your message to us, whether through the prayers, the hymns, or through, um, through just the reading of scriptures, or from the preacher's words. But guide and direct by your Holy Spirit that we would think of the things that you would have us think of, that we might be uh, ready to surrender those things to you, O oh Lord. Amen. <coughs> I invite you to just join with me in the Lord's Prayer as we remember it as a model for all of our prayers. Let us give him praise. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we 
forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory of God. song sheets, and uh, so the two songs, in my heart there rings a melody, and since Jesus came into my heart, are both on the same side, we can just go from one to the next. I invite you to stand the same. <coughs>
You know that when you were pagan, somehow or other you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed. And no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in every one it is the same God at work. Now to each one the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit a message, a message of wisdom. To another a message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another faith by the same Spirit. To another, another gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another miraculous powers. To another prophecy. To another distinguishing between Spirits. To another speaking in different kinds of tongues. And to still another the interpretation of tongues. All of these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. So, just as, one, just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body, so it is with Christ. For we were all baptized by one Spirit so as to form one body, whether Jew or Gentiles, slave or free. We were all given the one Spirit to drink, even so, the body is not made up of one part, but of many. Please bow with me in prayer. Father, I thank you for the one spirit that guides us all. I ask you to be here, the one spirit, for all of us who are one of many. Many of one. Help us to feel you today in this time of worship. And speak through Frank as he... Um, brings us your scriptures. Help us to take something of it and make it our own because we are all part of one body of Christ here at Spring Lake. Amen. The Apostle Paul wrote, Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Paul wrote a significant part of the books that are found in the New Testament, his, his letters, the letters to the church, the church um, all over that part of the hemisphere. And uh, many were Jews who uh, came to recognize Jesus as the Messiah that they had uh, followed or, or that they'd been waiting for. Um, but many more were uh, anything but Jews, the Gentiles which uh, often were called the Greeks at that time because the Roman Empire had, uh, well, take, taken up the Greek culture. Uh, the Roman Empire, as they conquered, took the best of each of the uh, nations that they conquered and, and put it together and uh, made quite an empire. And in fact, uh, in doing so, God, uh, God working through that had all the ingredients necessary to be able to spread the way of God, the truth of Jesus Christ, throughout the whole known world. And when Paul is writing to the church in Corinth, uh, we see that uh, also uh, in Galatia and in um, Colossia, and, and a little bit here and there of the other letters where he's writing about the Spirit of God, the uh, fruit of the Spirit, but also the gifts of the Spirit. And those are different things. I preached quite some time ago on the fruit of the Spirit. 
And whenever I do that, I, I, I need to practice and, and make sure that I can remember all of the fruits of the Spirit because I, I think I have a bit of dyslexia when it comes to music. And so uh, trying to remember words by singing songs, as most uh, children did, and we did in countless vacation Bible schools, I, I found that, uh, that that didn't help me remember them. But the gift of the fruit of the Spirit is the results of having... Uh, the Holy Spirit of God working in you. It's the fruit that comes from the tree that you become, or uh, the, the, the branch or the vine. We know a lot about grafting citrus uh, stems, little stems onto the trunk of a different citrus tree so that you can, from sour oranges or from grapefruit roots, have sweet oranges and even have more than one kind grafted onto the same tree. Um, in, in the days of Jesus and, 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 and Europe, in Israel and all of Europe, much more familiar in parts of the country here uh, with grafting uh, shoots onto a vine, like for grapes. But the fruit of the Spirit is the fruit that comes from the plant. And so whether it's because of how God grafts us into the body of Christ or, um, or uh, in, any of those kinds of illustrations, what it's talking about is that the Holy Spirit of God works in us to produce fruit. Fruit that we could not produce on our own, but that God produces from us because of the Holy Spirit working in us. And uh, a lot of times we, we struggle in the life of the church because our expectation is more on what I'm going to do for God or what we, the church, are going to do for God. Or possibly it is uh, that our expectation is what God is going to do for me rather than what God is going to do in me to create uh, in me a new person. To change me from a, a child of the world to a child of God. To make me to be as God is in his righteousness rather than in the brokenness of sin that engulfs the world. And so here, Paul writes, now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want to be you, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, somehow the, or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Now, two chapters before this, in the 10th chapter of 1 Corinthians, um, Paul wrote this to the church. I do not want you to, uh, this is uh, uh, an excerpt out of chapter 10, verses 1 through 11. I do not want you to be ignorant of the fact, brothers and sisters, that our ancestors were all under the cloud and that they all passed through the sea. They were all baptized into Moses in the cloud and in the sea. And they all ate the same spiritual food and drank the same spiritual drink, for they drank from the spiritual rock that accompanied them. And that rock was Christ. Nevertheless, God was not pleased with most of them. Their bodies were scattered in the wilderness. And Paul is, is tying in the very familiar story that, with, that the people of, uh, of the Jews knew the people of God from that time knew of what God had done with the Israelites and the works that he had done. And he tied those to uh, the person of Christ. He didn't say Christ Jesus or Jesus Christ because that was the Christ working uh, there amongst God's people before he was in the flesh, before he was the person of Jesus that was born in the world and walked among us. Verse 6. Now these things occurred as examples to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. And so Paul is helping us to see that what took place through them, uh, the, the good and the bad, it, what, it was uh, by God's design so that we who are to be the people of God today can learn from their mistakes to keep us from setting our hearts on evil things as they did. Do not be idolaters as some of them were, as it was, is written. 
The people sat down to eat and drink and got up to indulge in revelry. We should not commit sexual immorality as some of them did. And in one day, 23,000 of them died. We should not test Christ as some of them did and were killed by snakes. And do not grumble as some of them did and were killed by the destroying angel. These things happened to them as examples and were written down as warnings for us on whom the culmination of the age has come. Are you seeing a familiar stream here? Are, are, you, are you recognizing not only uh, the, the, the parallels that took place uh, with the songs that we've sung thus, thus far and the scripture passages and, uh, and even our situation in the world today and our situation in the denomination today? And as we see what is going on in the news, and there's uh, uh, cons uh, th th there have been periods where our concern is high because of cities burning, or because of uh, criminals being released back into, or, or our borders being overrun. And as we see all of these things, and we think about, is the end near? How far are we into the end times? And yet, we see that through the Old Testament that God has kept for us for over all of these many, many generations. And the New Testament continue both to speak the same message to us and to give us the examples. And so when we see these crises, these things, and then even when we struggle ourselves with uh, sin tugging at our heartstrings, we can see that God has handled it before and that, well, God is going to handle it now. In 1 uh, Galatians chapter 5, we hear about the freedom that we have in Christ, but also a life by the Spirit. Freedom in Christ to have a life by the Spirit. Today I hear so many people who claim to be followers of Jesus Christ saying that... Um, because of Jesus, we're now free to just live our lives. Live our lives as we want to. Because he paid the price, so now we're free. We don't have to worry about the law and rules and regulations. We, we don't need to really even know the Bible because we just believe that Jesus died for us and his blood sets us free. But this is what Paul says to the early church. Considering how much time has passed since then, very soon after Jesus. He says... It is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. Now you might think that he was talking to the Jews about going back to being slaves like they were in Egypt. He's talking to the Christians. Jews who now believe in Jesus Christ and have accepted the forgiveness of sin, forgiveness for sin, uh, as well as Greeks, who now believe and are seeking to follow the way of God as shown through Jesus Christ. Do not let yourselves be burdened again by a yoke of slavery. How many times did Jesus heal somebody or cast out demons or forgive sins and then say, and go and sin no more? Or be careful that you don't go back to sinning or many more demons will come. Again and again and again. And Paul is echoing that for us. Verse 7, You were running a good race. Who cut, it, who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? This passage always has me think of my high school years of being running cross country and uh, practicing. You know, all of that practicing first with a friend that was older uh, that uh, had gone hiking with our Boy Scout troop, and I heard all the older guys talking about being in cross country, and I said, uh, uh, oh, I, let's see, I guess I was, they were sitting in the front and middle seats, and I was back in the cargo part of the Bronco, you know, a couple of us. Uh, we were old enough now that the older guys had let us hang out with them, but we sat in the cargo fold, you know. And so I heard him talking about, uh, well, we're getting back and we'll be starting on cross-country practice. And I said, oh, I, I want to run cross-country because I was just about to go to high school. And it was like crickets. I didn't, nobody said anything. So I was kind of like, okay, 
don't, don't talk, you're just in the cargo hold. But Greg, after we got home, Greg called me up and said, Frank, are you serious about running cross country? And I said, yes. And he said, okay, I'll pick you up at six something in the morning. This was way before the sun was coming up. And um, so it may have even been before six, but he, I'm going to pick you up and we'll go to the beach and we'll run. And he started me on a mile. Then later we did two miles and then, and then I was running three miles in time to be the newbie at high school to go out for the team. And, um, but my first race, after practicing, 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 I found that the race wasn't the same thing as just running and keeping on running. Because as soon as we got around the corner into the woods where nobody could see us, then elbows started flying. I wasn't expecting that. In fact, we didn't train for that, but the other school that we were running against, our arch nemesis, um, as soon as we were out of sight, uh, I was right behind another freshman. Well, one freshman, but you know what I mean. And a guy just, boom, hit him with the elbow because we were running along a uh, ditch and going to try to pass these guys. Boom, and he goes down into the big culvert. And I think about that as Paul is saying, you were running a good race. Who cut in on you to keep you from obeying the truth? And we see that today. We see people that are uh, bent on, I've got to disrupt the church. I've got to disrupt believers. I've, I've got to confront people who believe this and turn them away from this. Who's it hurting? Why is it happening? And Paul says that kind of persuasion does not come from the one who calls you. To turn away from God's way is not coming from God. It's coming from another. And in verse 9, the one who is throwing you into confusion, whoever that may be, will have to pay the penalty. That's words of comfort for me. Because I tend to get caught up in, I've got to make this right. I've got to stop this. How can I? And, and I tend to be the one that wants to go, go straight into battle to protect us from what's wrong here. But we're told here, that whoever that may be will be will have to pay the penalty. God's going to take care of that. We don't need to be caught up in the fighting this battle, but we do need to be caught up in speaking the truth, sharing the good news. The more people that we can turn over to God's way, the way that we see in Jesus Christ, uh, the more people are, are going to be saved when God makes this all the way it needs to be. In verse 16, no, verse 13, you, my brothers and sisters, are called to be free, but, to, but do not use your freedom to indulge in the flesh. Rather, serve one another humbly in love. So I say, verse 16, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. Walk by the Spirit. See, that's the solution. You and I can do our best and work our hardest and cry out the loudest, but it will never be enough unless we've opened ourselves to the working of God's Holy Spirit. We've allowed ourselves to be vessels through whom God's Word is spoken. I know, I know, but I haven't memorized enough Scripture. Neither had I. Still neither have I. But the Lord gives the right words from Scripture at the right time from what He has planted in my heart and has written upon my mind. And then sometimes I go looking for Scripture and find it. But He calls for us to speak the Word of God. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. So I say, walk by the Spirit, and you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other. So that you may not do whatever you want, but if you are led by the Spirit, you are, under, no, you are not under the law. Now, that reflects to me of passages in Romans. And where he talks about um, 
I do the things that I do not want to do, and I don't do the things that I want to do. Now, the want, that want part is, in that case, I want to do God's way, but I struggle with it. But there's also where, oh, man, I want to do the world's way, but uh, I've got to do God's way. I want, I, 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 I'm determined to do God's way. You get what I'm saying. And this is a battle that goes on, and it's one that we cannot win by ourselves, and the good news is we don't have to. We don't have to. And so many people under, have understood the, um, I'm a sinner, and I need to be saved, or I'll be eternally lost, and not in heaven. And if they believe in hell, then that makes it even more urgent. And so, what do I need to do to be saved? And, well, it's believe. I believe, oh good, and go on doing life the way they were doing it. But that's that's just like the demons. They they. They know Jesus Christ, and they fear and tremble. They know who he is, but that doesn't save them. We have to choose to have God's will in our life and put aside our will. And we need help to do that. And so we ask God, and by the power of his Holy Spirit, that's what we call grace. The power of God's Holy Spirit working in us to do what we can't do. So back to 1 Corinthians 12. The things that I want to emphasize here. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are, oh, verses 4 and 5. There are different kinds of service, but the same more. There are different kinds of working. But in all of them, and in every one, it is the same God at work. That's the Holy Spirit of God. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one there is given through the Spirit. And then you have a nice listing here in verses 7 through 11 about various gifts of the Holy Spirit. That can be another sermon. To each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To, the, to one there is given... Just, I'm just supposed to go from that. Um, and in this, we find that just as in the, the physical body of, of our person, though we are one person, we have many parts, but all of our parts form one body, and so it is with Christ. In Jesus Christ, all of the different parts of the body of Christ, the church, have different functions. And, but we are all one in Christ Jesus. In the world, there's been, a, 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 I guess, it's not endless because it will end when Christ comes again and when judgment is done and all that is evil is cast away. But there's this perception that if we just try hard enough, if we just agree to put aside all of our disagreements and, and we just all try hard enough, we'll make heaven on earth. And it's not what we're all going to do, especially not by putting aside our disagreements. But the scriptures tell us, both Hebrew and Christian, that God is the one who is going to do it, and that it comes when we are of one heart and one mind with him. And as we follow in the way of God, which is so clearly seen in the way of Jesus Christ, it's following in his way that we are able to live the life that he calls us to live. So back to Hebrews chapter 2, the first four verses. We must pay the most careful attention, therefore, to what we have heard so that we do not drift away. For since the message spoken through angels was binding, and every violation and disobedience received its just punishment, how shall we escape if we ignore such a great salvation? So much of the world thinks that we are here as Christians, as followers of Jesus Christ, to condemn the world. We need to quit giving them that false perception. We are not here to condemn the world. The world is condemned already. Before we were born, before Christ came into the world, before Abraham decided, Abram decided to follow uh, God's way and became Abram, 
It is already a condemned world. But God has come into the world as Jesus Christ to show us that he has provided a way. And from Genesis through Revelation breaks it down for us in kindergarten language with all these object lessons on this is the way that God has provided. And so what is our purpose? Maybe we say as much about sin as yes, this is a broken sinful world and we all suffer and struggle because of it. But then get right to the point that God has provided a way. He has provided a way for us to be better. And we all know that we need to be better. He has provided a way for us to be empowered to make the difference. And the way is right there in the scriptures. And people can choose God's way, or we can continue to struggle with doing it our own way. Would you pray with me? Father in heaven, we thank you for your blessings. I thank you, Lord, for how you've so wonderfully put together our uh, time of worship leading up to this message. Uh, how you've wonderfully put together and uh, put order to the jumble of thoughts that I saw in these scripture passages. And how you are putting it together in the minds and hearts of your people here. I've known from the day that I said yes to following you, Lord, that I wasn't enough. And I needed to follow you because I wasn't enough. Even at eight years old, I knew I couldn't handle what I was already facing alone. And so help us, O oh Lord, to remember that, even when we're at our best, remembering that we're not expected to do it on our own. We're expected to do it with you and see much greater results than we could ever hope for. We are invited. We're invited to become sons and daughters of God. We're invited to do some of the things that Jesus did as he tells us and shows us what his disciples have done. And so, Father, I ask, I ask that you would help every one of us here today and all of those that we can reach out and touch to, to make that decision to do it the way of God, as we find it in the person of Jesus Christ. Do it by the power of your Holy Spirit, not by our collective efforts, because that will never be enough. We ask the Lord, as we're facing off with the other factions of our denomination, that we can, uh, the people can see the miracle in us, that, that we can be not angry with that which is done against us. That we can be not angry with what seems to be taken away from us. But that we can go forward with love in our hearts and a hope of salvation for those who are currently our enemies or make themselves such. We pray, Lord, that we'll see miracles of God that move us along uh, a healthier path in being sons and daughters of God in our Methodist tradition. I pray this in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. So I just want to say that I really expected when I chose the, the, the passages, uh, well, Corinthian passages uh, in 1 Corinthians that I was just going to teach about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. But everything, everything kept on jumping out at me as to how the situation that Paul was addressing there is exactly the situation that we find ourselves today. That's what God meant in, uh, which is it? It's not Ephesians. Uh, when, where he says there's nothing new under the sun. Ecclesiastes. Yes, yes. There's nothing new under the sun. We're facing the same struggles. Let's go with sing. <laughs>
the contemporary Christian praise songs that we have been practicing on Wednesday night. This one was written back in 1932. <laughs> and uh, it was very contemporary then. So uh, I'll fly away. And if that was fun, I want you to know that Wednesday night, our uh, music gathering on Wednesday night is really just a jam session. And we're learning new songs and we're enjoying old songs. And uh, it's not a performance group, okay? But it's uh, anybody that wants to come and sing with us. Did, did the waterfall happen? Will you do the waterfall for us? Sir? This is my part. <laughs> <laughs> so, if you want to come on Wednesday night, the official time is from 6 to 7. Sometimes, uh, if, if, if we go beyond that, 7 o'clock is when you're allowed to stop and leave, okay? Uh, sometimes we go beyond that because we're just having so much fun. You're welcome to come. I can see over there, Joel was just uh, harmonizing with us. I can see it in his face. And, uh, and, and, and so, we have a few oldies and we have a few newies that we've been singing and... Uh, we, uh, we've been using modern technology with YouTube and a karaoke machine to help us to actually know what we're striving for while we sing. But this past week, we met together with Nancy and had a lot of fun with her uh, on Wednesday night over here. Hallelujah. And, and it was by her invitation, by the way, uh, and uh, we had a good time with that. Um, so. I uh, hope that some more of y'all will join us. We, we meet in the fellowship hall, so we have plenty of room. Okay. All right, and I'll, uh, okay. I know. I got something to say yes, real quick. Before I do, uh, I, in just a moment, I'm going to send us away with a blessing, asking God's blessing on our meal. Um, when you go into the praise center, you'll see a table with a sign-in sheet. Would you please sign in? We kind of need to have the names and numbers of the, how many people attended, not just for the, uh, the meal, but for the meeting. Okay, there's two tiny inch seats there, so just kind of do that for me. Okay? And, and being a member is not required nope. uh, for the fellowship meal, and being a member is not required for you to uh, learn information from our information meeting. Um, and uh, you, you're, you're invited, you're encouraged to participate if you are part of uh, the, um, the church at Spring Lake. And uh, everybody here has been a part of that for uh, a long time or a little while. So, oh, no voting happening this time. We're, uh, that won't come until we see how things are panning out and we have something to decide. Okay, God's blessings to you, Heavenly Father. We thank you for feeding our spirits today, and we ask that as we go uh, over to our praise center and, and give you praise for the food that we have there and enjoy the fellowship. Uh, that you would nourish our spirits, as well, our bodies as well as our spirits. And uh, we pray these things in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Amen.